Hey guys, uh, welcome back to the Jones Zone. Uh, this is going to be a quick one. Um, and uh, it's, I'm going to be reading from Matthews. It's a, a passage out of Matthews. It's going to be chapter 12. And um, it's that part where Jesus uh, talks about unclean spirits. All right, so um, I think this scripture is... I think there's there's something more to it than the usual interpretation. Like the usual interpretation, people say that, well, you know, when an uh, unclean spirit goes out of a man, you know, it comes back and it finds the place swept clean, and then that person becomes worse. But it's, it's I think there's a little bit more to it than that. Um, I mean, I'm not saying that that's totally wrong, but um, there's another way that you can that, to look at this that's also applicable as well. Okay, so starting at uh, verse 43, it says here, uh, Jesus says, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when uh, he is come, he find it empty, swept and garnished. Okay, so at 45 here, it says, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter in and dwell there in the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it also be under this wicked generation. Okay, so when it says the last state of that man is worse than the first, it's not talking about the same person. It's talking about another man. Because why would the spirits come in there and find it swept clean? They would find it swept clean because the first man has already, he's left. Now you have a second man that goes in there, all right? That comes into that space. And instead of him wrestling with one demon, He's going to have to wrestle with seven that have returned there. Okay, he's starting off not with one, but with seven. Whereas the first guy, he had to deal with one. And he ends up leaving. The other guy comes back. He has to deal with seven demons. Okay, and his, his starting condition, when he is afflicted by them, is going to be worse than the guy that was there before. And then it says, even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. All right, so just like you had, uh, I don't know, 50, 60 years ago, you had the, the generation, the baby boomers and all of them. And, you know, the, things were better for them after the war. You know, they had they lived a really nice life. They were comfortable and stuff like that. And they didn't have, I'm not saying that they were sinless or, or blameless or nothing like that. But, you know, people with neighbors and would, would come together and people would go to church a little bit more. It was a better, you know, uh, generation than it is today. You know, everybody, hey, how's it going there, Bill? Uh, how you doing there, buddy? You know? Uh, their pal, you know, today people don't even really interact with their neighbors, you know, uh, the TV, the music, uh, the, our forms of entertainment are just w way more sinful just from the get go. And it's because this generation is not wrestling with just one demon, so to speak. It's just, this generation is wrestling with seven times as much temptation, seven times as much sin than the previous generation. And I think that I'm not saying that the usual interpretation of this is wrong. It, I'm sure this applies. If you sin, you shouldn't sin again or your condition is going to be worse. But also what this is saying is that when, when it comes to generations, the next generation is going to be worse off than the first generation, which is what we're seeing today. So I hope that this gives you a little bit more insight on this uh, passage here uh, in Matthew chapter 12. Um, and... Uh, Thanks for watching, guys, and you have a blessed day.